when it comes to climate change and education, it is really important um, that um, climate change issues are, are well understood by all parts of uh, society. Um, certainly uh, communities who are at the forefront of, of tackling uh, many of the uh, risks and impacts uh, that are currently unfolding. Uh, but I also think it's really important to prepare the, the next generation um, of uh, community leaders, uh, country leaders, uh, the next generation of adults uh, who perhaps are, are currently uh, you know, um, uh, in the grade school uh, but who will uh, inherit a, a world that is much more difficult and challenging uh, to, to exist in and than the current generation. So ensuring that the education systems are geared towards preparing uh, our future generations to understand um, what the risks are, what needs to be done. Uh, will certainly uh, lend itself uh, to being prepared better uh, to, to tackle uh, some of the, the risks that are ahead of us. UNDP provides support um, in three areas. We work with governments uh, to ensure that their uh, policies and, and, and plans and, and budgets um, uh, take climate change uh, into account. Um, we work with uh, the private sector, uh, small medium enterprises around the world, uh, mobile phone providers to ensure that uh, they also play an effective uh, role in, in the adaptation challenge. And, and finally, we focus on uh, marginalized communities around the world um, who are currently facing uh, significant risks uh, and, and impacts uh, that need immediate uh, response to, uh, whether it is in the context of disaster risk reduction or, or managing uh, climate change uh, related risks over the, the, the coming years. Um, we are currently active in uh, more than 100 uh, countries around the world. Uh, the portfolio is uh, currently uh, valued at more than a billion dollars of grant funding um, which is flowing to countries um, and, and these uh, are essentially creating opportunities uh, around the world uh, to um, uh, manage uh, risks. I think uh, the first thing to recognize is that uh, we need to understand what the various risks uh, are uh, when it comes to climate change. Um, we definitely need to understand what the vulnerabilities of, of a particular uh, community or, or society or, or landscape is. Um, and, and certainly uh, we also need to understand the exposure um, that will uh, need to be taken into account uh, in order to understand what the likely magnitude of, of uh, impacts uh, are going to be. Um, and there are various uh, tools uh, that, are, that are out there um, that can be used uh, for that purpose. Um, some uh, lean towards uh, very uh, technical, um, scientific uh, type. Um, others are, are, are equally important and equally valid in many cases where data and information is scarce. And, and that has to do with uh, more qualitative uh, ways of identifying uh, uh, these issues. Um, but identifying uh, the, the risks uh, needs to also recognize that we're talking about uh, ranges. Um, we're not talking about anything absolute. Um, we're also talking about uh, um, uh, geographic and, and temporal scales uh, that are going to vary uh, from place to place um, uh, because that's essentially what uh, climate change entails. It's something that is long term. Um, it's going to affect all of us in different ways. Uh, there are going to be winners and there are going to be losers. And, and right now it looks like there are going to be a lot more losers than, than winners. Um, so it is a very complex uh, um, uh, issue uh, that needs to be tackled in a very um, comprehensive and, and, and systematic uh, manner. But beyond the identification of the risks, um, we need to go beyond it. And, and, and taking action is important. And on this front, uh, we need to recognize um, actions that are largely um, uh, public uh, in nature, which require government support or public finance uh, to, to uh, provide the means through which uh, communities can uh, do something to, to manage, uh, cope with these risks. Uh, but there are other actions which are largely private in nature, which uh, you and I and, and, and people uh, around the world will be uh, taking uh, very much on their own. Uh, they will not be waiting and sticking around uh, to, to, to take action, they, they will have to do it themselves. Um, there will be trade-offs involved for sure uh, because um, you know we don't have all the resources in the world 
to do everything that we need. Um, even within the spectrum of uh, adaptation, there are a suite of options that, that have to be um, put into place or implemented. Uh, we can't do uh, all of it at the same time, uh, nor do we need to. Um, so there are uh, some trade-offs that have to be made, some sequencing that has to take place. Um, and all of these things need to be uh, uh, thought through and, and talked, uh, talked about and discussed in a very consultative way in order to ensure that societies uh, uh, make the, the, the most optimal uh, choices. Um, adaptation cannot be seen, alone, seen as a, a standalone um, uh, uh, response. Um, it is intrinsically linked with uh, other development uh, uh, objectives and, and approaches and, and solutions. So um, what we in UNDP advocate is very much an integrated uh, a solution um, that uh, joins the dots and, and ensures that uh, we uh, make use of all the opportunities uh, uh, that exist to um, uh, foster and, and advance uh, resilient uh, societies. Um, and finally, um, it's not a one-off uh, action. Uh, you know, this is something that's going to be with us for a very long time. It's going to require iterative uh, actions, uh, both in the identification of risks, uh, vulnerabilities, and exposure. I think uh, what we need to recognize is that climate change is going to touch um, every part of society, every part of the economy, um, and it will uh, not uh, be exclusive. Uh, uh, we're all going to be affected in different ways. So uh, the key here is to really recognize uh, how each of our, our sectors uh, that are important uh, uh, for our economies, and, and this is going to differ from country to country, um, um, will be impacted and, and identify what needs to be done, um, not just within uh, those sectors or industry, uh, but what implications those actions in any sector have on others, because we live in a very interconnected uh, world um, and uh, things will uh, certainly have uh, feedback and, and uh, multiplier impacts um, across economies, across countries. So this cannot be looked at uh, in, in, in isolation of the bigger picture. Uh, so it very much goes beyond one sector, one industry, uh, and certainly will uh, need uh, us to focus on, on all critical uh, sectors and economies for, for countries. In a number of um, water stressed areas, uh, desalinization of course um, comes into uh, the picture, uh, whether it is in the outer atolls of the Maldives or the outer islands uh, in the Pacific, um, where there are no other options uh, for, for drinking water other than groundwater, um, uh, options such as desal are, are considered. However, I think uh, what must be said here is that A, um, before we even get to desal, there are lots of other options uh, that can be exhausted uh, before the more expensive ones like desal um, is taken into account. Um, the rainwater harvesting, uh, integrated water resource systems um, are, are among uh, some of the options uh, that are a lot cheaper uh, to, to put in place and to operate um, than some of the more de uh, expensive options like desalinization, uh, which also has to have uh, significant energy sources uh, to operate. Um, so I think what I would say here is that solutions must be very much uh, context specific. Um, there is a cost-benefit uh, calculus that has to be uh, taken into account um, and it doesn't automatically mean that uh, water stressed areas need to immediately jump into desalinization as their solution uh, before they um, exhaust other options uh, that are also feasible and very much practiced around the world. So thank you very much for all the questions. Um, uh, I hope it has been uh, useful for you to learn a little bit about what UNDP is doing. Uh, certainly, uh, you can visit our website, uh, www.undp.org, um, and uh, acquire a lot more information uh, that way as well. Uh, I have certainly learned a lot from your questions, and I look forward to engaging with you uh, more on Twitter.